Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Winning Cures Everything, NFL week number nine gambling picks. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, all of our videos, our social media platforms, etc. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. You can find us there over at winningcureseverything.com. Of course, you can also subscribe to the show on YouTube. If you're watching on there, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button and comment on the show. Tell us your picks for the week. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, etc. Tell us what you, think, uh, what you think about our picks. Just roll on. The show... Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Last week, I went two and three in the NFL against the number. I was down $38.64. Chris went three and three, and he made $63.64. Stacy Lewis last week went eight and two and won the tiebreaker. To win our football picks contest for the week, you won a $50 gift certificate to one of the steakhouses down there and a $25 free play to one of the casinos down in Tunica. So you can do that as well. All you got to do is enter. It's free to get in. Go over to winningcureseverything.com, click on the football picks contest, and you can enter in your name, your email, and then we got 10 games. And then you're going to put in your tiebreaker, and that's it. It takes about two minutes. Very, very simple, multiple choice kind of stuff. So go check it out. Do your research, go in and win. On the season, I am 18 and 25. I am down 10.09 units. Chris is 21 and 19. He is up 6.22 units. Yeah, you've hit over 60% the last two seasons. We got a little ways to go. I think you can get there. Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to get to 60. Well, I was 62 the last two years. I don't know if I'm going to get that. 60 is tough. And 60 is real tough. Real, real tough. <clears throat> Doing that two years in a row, I was pretty much prepared this year to. A huge embarrassing failure. To, to go back down a little bit, right? <clears throat> yeah, you don't. You just can't do it year in and year out. No, nah, Vegas doesn't uh, doesn't build them things for nothing. That's right. So let's go ahead and jump in. I've got five games. What do you got? Four. Four. Okay, I'll start us off because we're gonna fly through them because uh, we are maybe having some microphone issues. Uh, but we'll get to TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, of course. Once we get through these picks, so let's go ahead and jump in. Game number one for me, the Patriots at the Ravens. This is the big one. And everybody's kind of scared of this line, right? It opened up, I think, at like six. Got bet all the way down to three and a half. Look. Look. I'm telling you. The Patriots, when they're playing a second-year quarterback, what is it, like 28-0? I mean, it's crazy. Just ridiculous numbers. And I'm only giving up three and a half points? I understand that we're going on the road here. But you also understand that this Patriots defense is maybe legendary, maybe just all-time great. I mean, they are really shooting for 16-0 this year. They're shooting for 19-0. I, I think this defense has a chance to go down as the greatest of all time. They've got a long way. Oh, they're halfway oh, yeah. there. They're halfway there. Now, you're right about that. And, and if anybody can devise a game plan to slow down Lamar Jackson, I believe it would be the Patriots. So give me the Patriots, minus three and a half. I was going to do 75. Screw it. I'm already behind. Let me put 100 bucks on it at minus 110. I love this pick. I think Belichick absolutely humbles Lamar Jackson in that bunch. I don't think they are as good as they have, have looked so far. Um, I think their record is a, uh, a reflection of their schedule. And I think the Patriots absolutely, I'm not going to say embarrass them, because they didn't embarrass the the Browns, but they did cover. Uh, that game was in a downpour. Yeah, it was a little different. And I, I don't think that this week will be. So far, the weather reports say we should be fine. Give me the Patriots, minus three and a half at the Ravens. So my first pick, I'm going to Thursday night football. And and I'm just going to keep taking these big favorites in, in, in the pros because I think that the NFL lines just refuse to get big enough when good teams play bad teams. Look, this Cardinals team is is not a bad team, but they're not a great team either. I don't even know that they're a good team. They're young, they're inexperienced, and this defense is going to have their way with Kyler Murray. Just their way. The offense, 
good enough to beat anybody. They can run the football down everyone's throat. You know what's not going to happen if if Kyle Shanahan goes up against one William Belichick in the Super Bowl, he is <laughs> not going to get caught not being able to run the football. Yeah. Because they couldn't run the football in the Super Bowl. So they just kept throwing, kept throwing, kept throwing. And it bit them. And Bill just kept coming. Oh, yeah. You're not going to be able to do that this time. Kyle is going to run it down everybody's throats. He's going to run it all down Arizona's throat. It's 10 points. Double-digit road favorite. On a short short week. On a short week. Home team catching 10 points is just a fool's bet. You just blindly take the dog. I'm not going to do that. $50, $50 minus 110. Give me the 49ers. I can understand it. I can understand. All right, game number two for me. Let's go ahead and run over to London. Let's go across the pond the Texans and the Jaguars. The Jags are catching two here. I love the Jags. I love the Jags plus two. I think Minshew Mania has caught me. He, The boy knows how to win. He knows how to play the game. Uh, the, they almost beat the Texans early, early in the year. And, I mean, all it was was a two-point conversion. Went, went awry, right? Leonard Fournette looks good this year. He leads the AFC in rushing. Uh, I think they're going to be able to run on the Texans a little bit, especially with J.J. Watt out. Texans defense hadn't been great anyway. I mean, you you told me that. Yep. Uh, I, I love the Jags in this spot. I think they get a little bit of revenge here. At, give me the Jags, plus two. I got the same bet. What same do you got bet. on them? I got 50 bucks at minus 110. I got 75. 75? You love them that much, huh? I do. I can, uh, I can get down with it. Let's see. Next one up. I am rolling to Seattle. And in college, I went with the dog in Seattle. This go round, I'm going with the Seahawks. Now you I know the home team both times. They're the home team both times, yes. There you go. But uh, but this time Seahawks giving up six against Tampa Bay. Like Tampa Bay, one week they look all right, one week they don't. Last week against Tennessee looked all right, didn't get the win, but they looked all right. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I don't think that's going to work against the Seahawks. No, the Seahawks secondary, not great. Mike Evans might put up some numbers. But do you think Jameis ain't going to be throwing some picks in this game? Oh, yeah. like yeah, I, that's, that's a given. I almost fully expect them to turn the football over. Yeah, at now. least twice. So so now I got the Seahawks at less than a touchdown. Like, I understand last week, you know, Atlanta came back a little bit at the end of the game and, and Matt Shaw threw for 300 and whatever yards, and I get that. Seahawks at home, I like them a lot in this spot. Tampa Bay has not played a home game since September 15th. They have been on the road and on the road and on the road. That's got to get tiring at some point. They have really tried to win some of these games. I think this is where it all goes away. They have played well on the road. They won at the Rams. They played well against the Titans, man. They, they, they've had some good showings. I think it finally comes off the rails here. Give me the Seahawks minus six at fifty bucks at minus one ten. What uh what you got on your next one? Pretty predictable. I mean, this was just like clockwork. The Indianapolis Colts have played seven games. I have bet on them seven times. They have covered five and two. Their record for five and two. They're going to Pittsburgh. And I just do not see how they're not going to win this game. Pittsburgh didn't look great against the Dolphins. They nope. eventually pulled away late. That is a team that I think the front office is trying to quit. Don't tell Brian Flores that. But um, I think this Colts team is going to make them look bad. I mean, I, I, I was shocked. To I find mean, they, they may not the have Colts James Conner, and they, I, they've only got one healthy running back on the roster. I was shocked to find the Colts plus one. Shocked. But I'm taking plus one for $75. I'm with you. What is it, minus 110? Yep. All right, I can understand it. I can understand it. Next up for me, we're going Monday Night Football. And I am pumped about this. The Dallas Cowboys giving up seven at the Giants. Look, this opened minus nine. Ton of people on the Giants. Oh, it's a division game. Oh, the Giants are at home. da 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 da, da. Look, the Cowboys starting to get things figured out a little bit. Amari Cooper, he's healthy again. 
Look, Amari Cooper had massive numbers against them the first go-round. Daniel Jones, everybody thinks that he's the next coming. No. No, 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 no. Uh, they, they had a good showing against the Lions last week. Got beat, but had a good showing. I think the Cowboys lay it all on the line. I think they cover this touchdown. I'm putting 50 bucks on them at minus 110. My last game. I have bet against Philadelphia a lot this year. And I kind of stopped the last couple of weeks because I think they are seeming like the old Philly and they're kind of putting it all together. And so I'm on them now. Philly minus five. They're playing the Bears. The Bears just got beat by a team that the second they beat them, the, the Chargers won the game and fired their OC. Are you right? Has that ever happened? Has anybody ever got fired after a win? I don't think so. That's how bad the Bears are. I'm sure it's happened. That's how bad the Bears are. They're like, we just beat this team. We beat them in spite of you because they suck and you suck. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, the Bears should have won the game had Eddie made the kick. But he didn't make the kick. This offense is still garbage. No, it's definitely that. They should should have traded for somebody. And instead, they stuck with Mitchell. They stuck with Mitchell. So Philly minus five? Philly minus five, 100 bucks. $100? Boy, you are all over the Eagles right now. De- no, I know. I'm just against the Bears. I can understand it. I love this team. I love this Chicago team. How dare Mitchell Trubisky ruin my season? What is it, minus 110? Yeah. All right. Next up, last game for me. That was the last one for you, Rick. That's, I'm done. That's the last one for you. All right, last one for me. Off. I am rolling to Oakland where Oakland has not played a home game since September the 15th. The Raiders finally coming back home. They have looked good. They look like they are in playoff contention. Give me them Raiders. Minus two at home against the Lions. The Lions have looked good against a lot of teams. But they're going on the road. I like the Raiders at home here. I think Derek Carr has been playing great. I think they've got a good running game right now. Josh Jacobs has been... as good as expected, if not more. And this team has got playmakers. The offensive line is healthy. Last week was the first time they'd been healthy in forever. They're healthy right now. I think they're going to be able to run the football. I think they'll be able to throw. I think the defense looks good. Uh, it, look, I got to make some money back on the Raiders because I had them under six and a half, and I think it's going to go over now. Uh, yeah, give me the Raiders minus two for 50 bucks at minus 110 there. And, of course, you can always go back, read through the picks, or go over to winningcureseverything.com to the gambling picks page and see what we've got for the week and see what we've done every year, every pick for the last, what, four seasons now? Four seasons. That's a long, long time. All right. Now we're going to bring in our buddy, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can check him out there. You can also find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. This is TJ Reeves. And on every week to talk some NFL gambling with us, we're talking doggies this go around. We got TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Get him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, your Bucks came to Nashville and went <laughs> home with the tail between their legs, man. I, I thought y'all were going to get that win. Uh, hey, at 23-17 in the third quarter and the Bucks have the ball and are driving, I'm thinking we're going to have a happy post-game show and a happy playing ride and, you know, a good mood for the rest of the week. And it did not work out. And credit the Titans, credit Ryan Tannehill, uh, credit their defense for being able to get turnovers. And Tennessee gets a large win. And for my Buccaneers, struggling to put it together. And the world tour is going to continue because the Bucks, who have not played a game at Raymond James Stadium <laughs> since the month of September – Still will not play one this week at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. We will go all the way out to the other end of the continent to Seattle and, and play the Seahawks. Uh, so, so the travails continue to Los Angeles and back, to New Orleans and back, to London and back, to Nashville and back, and now to Seattle and back before you play a home game. I mean, that so is the just world tour brutal. continues. We should print up T-shirts, Good Gary places. and and Chris. We should print them up. That's that is so ridiculously tough. Like. It, it, it's got to be wearing on you a little bit 
Like I can't imagine that it's not yeah. wearing on on the players as well, right? Good point. Good. I don't even play, and it gets tiresome. But <laughs> hey, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. It, it is the schedule, and the other team's not going to have sympathy, and the Seahawks are going to be angry in that situation uh, because they've lost a couple of times at home. So uh, we'll talk some, I'm sure, about that game on Three Dog Thursday with the Buccaneers being an underdog here uh, in this instance. It, uh, you know, Mike Evans came to life last week, but you know, hey, Seattle off there win in Atlanta. We'll, let, we'll let, let's let's chat a little a little fantasy, okay? Sure. Uh, just just curious, what the hell is going on with Mike Evans? Like, it, he has these massive weeks, and then he has weeks where he does not show up at all. What, That's true. What is like? Is there just something about like? certain weeks I mean, tell me it tell me what is up. going yeah. on here. well that that and that's a good point so two of the games have been against division foes recently we're talking about where Marshawn Lattimore outstanding defensive back of the Saints always grapples with him and seemingly gets the better of him and he didn't have a catch in that game and the game in London it's James Bradbury uh who again is an excellent cover corner of Carolina that always seems to get the better of Mike Evans when they play head-to-head the, di- the difference is there's about three or four other games against the Giants or, or last week uh, in the matchup with the Titans where Bradbury and Lattimore aren't around and he just annihilates the opposition one-on-one and he went off last week. So it's tough to predict. I, I will say this, the Seahawks have uh, have a good, not it's not the Legion of Boom anymore, a good secondary, not a great secondary, and they've shown some vulnerability to the past. So maybe it is going to be Mike Evans. For some big fantasy purposes, I could, uh, we'll see. I could totally see that. I could absolutely see that because that, guys have put up points on that defense. Um, he had 198 yards receiving in the third quarter last week. Yeah, I mean, we were sitting there in a close game saying this could be 250. This oh, could yeah. be 250 or approaching uh, Julio Jones, Flipper Anderson, 300 yard territory in a receiving uh, in a single game, but he, he didn't end up uh, getting anywhere near that in the fourth quarter, but. He's got the capability of uh, of having big days. We'll see what happens there in Seattle. I, I think he is completely unheralded. I mean, if you put him in a a real like, imagine him with somebody like Tom Brady. I mean, it's just right. it, you can't even imagine what the numbers would be. And if he was playing in Dallas, where they're on national TV all the time, if he was playing oh, yes. with Rodgers in Green Bay, where they're on national TV a bunch, or like New England, like you're saying there would be a lot more attention on him. And, and honestly, the Buccaneers haven't won a lot. So there's a, that's another reason why there's not a lot of attention on him. But he's he's a he's a freak physically at 6'5", with the long arms and the athletic ability and great hands to be able to, to come up with balls uh, that, are, that are tough to catch. And he makes it look easy uh, on that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with Evans and, and the Bucs and Jameis Winston gunslinging. Let's uh, – now, of course, we're going to talk some dogs. I am curious. Let's go on and talk about one that I think you're probably going to lean into on Three Dog Thursday. Let's talk about the Texans and the Jags, the uh, the London let's game. Talk about, let's talk about London, England. Hey, who on your <laughs> show here between the three of us might be a little familiar with London? Oh, that <laughs> would be me. The guy that we I, got on. <laughs> I think that I was just there. I'm not sure if I was. Yes, let me look. I was there a couple of weeks ago. And in this case, the Jaguars, this is right up their alley. They do this every year. They, they play one of their home games in London. A lot of their same players have done this three or four times now as veteran players. And this is a rematch game with Houston. We, we know the situation with J.J. Watt now being out for the year, torn pectoral muscle. That obviously hurts. We don't know midweek what's going on with Deshaun Watson's eye. Uh, Chris Giannini, do we know anything more? about his eye and that status. He looked like Rocky Balboa, like put me, you know, at the end of the Raiders game. Do we know about the eye and Deshaun Watson here? Uh, because that's, that's a big deal against a good Jaguars defense if, if, if he is somehow slowed by that. I don't, we don't know about the eye. We know he's going to play. That's what we know. Sure. So he's not missing this game. They don't have a backup plan. They don't have a plan B. But um, how, how bad is it going to be? How you know? Can they get the swelling to go down? Because it did. It looked. It looked, it looked, looked nasty. Like it did not look pretty. Um, and, 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 and JJ Watt out, of course. I mean, that's right. that's a big deal. Their defense hadn't been very good anyway. Well, so, agreed. But that that's still. And and you know. I will tell you this: Minshew mania has taken over North Florida in Jacksonville with the rookie quarterback Gardner <laughs> Minshew, and they passed out thirty-five thousand fake mustaches at a home game recently. 
He looked great against the Jets on Sunday. This is a revenge game, too. They could have, should have, could have, would have. They could have beaten Houston in the first matchup. Right. They scored late, and they went for two and botched it on the inside handoff to Fournette, and the Texans stopped them with like a minute left in the game or 30 seconds left in the game. So the revenge right, game, they team. know each other well. So I, I'm looking strongly at the Jaguars here as a short underdog against those Houston Texans in London, and that's breakfast. Breakfast with the AFC South. Coming at 8.30 uh, Central Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. Adjust your time zone accordingly. That, that's going to be an early morning game. Yeah, we always love those games. Yes. It, it, where you can get up and just make a pot of coffee. And, you know, you, you sleep in a little bit until about 8, 8.30. And then the game comes on. And you just kind of sit around in your pajamas and hang out. You know, enjoy yourself watching a little NFL. So tell, us, will, uh, tell us what we can expect on, uh, on, on Three Dog Thursday this week. What, uh, what you got for I, us? I will tell you, I will promise you that we will talk about that game. There's a couple of other interesting ones. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys off the bye week against the Giants. That one is obviously the Monday night game. What's going to happen with Patrick Mahomes? Is he playing for the Chiefs or not? Would they risk it here? Uh, I, it seems to me it's kind of crazy. There's going to be a lot of conversation about underdogs in a couple of those games. So looking forward to talking all about it. Uh, you guys are always gracious for, for having me on here on the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Chris Giannini, you're going to be on with me, and you were golden. You had the New Orleans Saints back a couple of weeks ago against the Bears. So I'm anxious to hear what you like uh, on Three Dog Thursday when you come on with me here for an underdog prediction. So I'm looking forward to that, guys, and I, I always love being on with you guys and, and hanging out. Well, we love having you on. It's always a good time. Uh, Chris is dropping nothing but winners, man. He's He's a, he's a baller on this. Be, be very careful well, about college. I blanked it last week. Well, I need I need some I need some mojo with some NFL underdogs here on the podcast. We've done we've done pretty well here with at least two or three every week on the podcast. So I'm counting on on Chris to be there, and uh, I always I always love the opportunity to get on with you guys and to get you guys on with me on Three Dog Thursday. It's a blast to have you on. Well, we appreciate you being on, and we love being on with you as well. Of course, Three Dog Thursday podcast, you can get it anywhere, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc. whatever your favorite podcast app is. Go check that thing out, and you can follow TJ on Twitter at BuckSidelineGuy. TJ, we will talk to you again next week. Always love being on with you. We try to keep it simple for the audience. The Three Dog Thursday podcast is, of course, on Thursdays. You can find it on <laughs> Thursdays because it would be a real day podcast was not available Thursday. So I look forward to having Chris on. Thank you guys for having me. Let's see if we can come up with some doggies for everybody. All right. We appreciate TJ hopping in with us. TJ is always a good time. We, uh, we look forward to having him every week, of course, during the football season. You can find him over at the Three Dog Thursday podcast on any of your favorite podcast apps. Again, on Twitter, at Guy. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com, our football picks contest, our social media platforms, YouTube, podcast, etc. If you're listening on Apple Podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you review the show. We love the reviews. We've gotten some good ones here. Uh, you put one in, you put a question in, or even a funny comment, whatever. We're going to read it on the air. So jump in there, Apple Podcasts, leave a nice review. If you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, and then leave a comment. Tell us what your picks are for the week. Tell us uh, tell us what you like about our picks, what you don't like. Tell us where we got it wrong. We had somebody jump in last week and said, don't take the Bills against the Eagles. And I didn't listen to them. I didn't listen. I should have listened. But... I will start listening if you can give me a good reason. So, uh, jump in there, leave some comments. Of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure that you go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi brings you the show every week. They've got six incredible sports books. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination. So, go check them out. Tunicatravel.com, winningcureseverything.com. And we will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.